Fatima, you are the first woman who's been appointed to the board of directors at Oradu. And uh, through your corporate career, you've come a long way. You've covered a lot of ground, be it brand, marketing, be it digital transformation. And your journey as a woman in business in a, in a culture that the world perceives is not very enabling of women's ambitions. It's fascinating. What makes Fatima Sultan al Kuwari the woman she is today, a corporate powerhouse and one of the largest conglomerates in the GCC region? I'm a woman that has a passion for technology and that is willing to give it all and actually do my best and continue learning. That's one of the things that probably uh, shapes who I am in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm never uh, afraid to say no. Uh, and uh, I always like a challenge. And that's probably uh, what caused the diversity throughout my career. You know, whenever there is a new challenge, I would, you know, immediately jump into it and, and see where it takes me. And were there any challenges that were particularly intimidating for you and thereby in being that were particularly rewarding? Uh, as you said, uh, in every challenge, there is a reward in itself. You know, I'll start actually from the university years where I actually studied computer science, not a very popular field for girls, not then and not even now. Uh, also, when I joined Uridu at the early years, uh, you know, first couple of years, I was almost the only Qatari woman and in many cases, the only women in any technical meeting. So that was kind of a challenge that I faced, uh, being chosen to be the spokeswoman of the company and the first woman to hold such a position for, you know, the biggest telecom company here in Qatar. Um, and then in that journey as well, I was part of the rebranding team. So, you know, that was a very big challenge to make sure that a well-established telecom company with an established brand that is actually representative of the, the nation here in Qatar will be accepted to actually rebrand and become a different, you know, full palette of colors, different logo, different name. And then how can we actually make sure that this rebrand doesn't affect us uh, in terms of business? The Western perception of um, equality and women's rights, you know, when you talk about that, Countries like Qatar don't really come top of mind. And naturally, you know, the Gulf countries do have a long way to go when it comes to uh, achieving true equality. But a lot of people don't know is that when compared with your neighbors, Qatar is one of the most liberal countries in the region. Talk to me a little bit about the state of women's rights in Qatar. What is empowering? What is restrictive still? And what is being done to sort of bring about more equality at the, across civilian life? Actually, to be honest, Qatar is one of the most advanced and forward thinking in, in this field uh, across the region. Uh, you know, we were the first in 1997 to have women vote politically. Uh, and that was the first in the region uh, compared to our neighboring countries. The highest political uh, representation of the country, His Highness the Emir, actually supports uh, the inclusion of women by setting all the policies that support inclusion and support of education to both genders. Technology and innovation is kind of uh, a foundation layer for us to help build our nation and move forward. Mm -hmm. um, I think education plays a big role uh, and for us, especially here in Qatar, uh, there's always a debate uh, probably externally on uh, whether we are a preservative culture that, you know, live by tradition or we are a progressive, progressive uh, culture. And I think uh, we are a mix of both. The new generation and the youth of Qatar actually is full of new ideas and, and, and ways of doing things. And that's the way that I think uh, is, is making Qatar a unique place where it's a mix of the you know, progression, the actual future, and still there is a sense of the tradition and the culture in a way that is still balanced. For conglomerates, the likes of Urdu, um, what are the many things that you are doing and investing in to be able to not just bring in a more intentional culture of inclusion, uh, but also to retain women should they choose to take a break? About 25% of the workforce is women. And Which when we took, and yeah, and a few of them are, are actually at the senior level, so yeah. at the chief level and as executive level. When we also talk about uh, diversity, we have about 30 nationalities working for us here in Qatar. And that's a representation of the wider society, uh, special needs people who work for us at the organization. So I think there are policies that are uh, in place, but it's not just a tick up in a box. We're actually living these values and the leadership at the organization is actually believing in that and making it a reality. And that's the difference, differentiating factor for, for women like me, to be honest, to, to choose to go for an organization like Uridu where the environment is actually open, yeah. diverse, 
and inclusive and understand my needs. And, you know, being a single mom, I have a big need to actually have a support system within the workplace that allows me to be a mother and yet be a very successful professional as well. Personally for you, what is that one technology area that you're interested in and you're really excited about and why? To be honest, I'm super excited about 5G. It is the next big thing for us. Here in Qatar and in the te- telecom world uh, all over. And uh, you know we're very proud here in Qatar that uh, we were the first uh, country in the world to launch commercially 5G network back in May 2018 to see what artificial intelligence, machine learning can do and the use cases around that, you know. Um, the, the the future is very bright and very different from where we are today. And we're talking about these kind of use cases and exploring them specifically for our pre- preparations here in Qatar for the World Cup 2022. And we're very excited that, you know, I'm very happy personally that I'm part of uh, Uridu and a technology company that will provide that foundation and that, uh, you know, can be part of that ecosystem that will deliver amazing, hopefully in 2022.